Hi everyone, I'm Rosemary, and today I'm going to be painting this pickup truck. Um, all of you who know me should have picked up your kits at the library and should have everything in front of you that you need to complete this project. Uh, everyone chose a different color, and I just want you all to see that this is the green. Uh, this is the blue. This is not the truck we have. This is a smaller version that has the tree in the back, and they're available if you ever want them. The blue, and of course the red. And today I'm going to be painting black because that's a color I also offered and um, I don't have a sample of it, so I figured it's easy for me to paint the black. So what I did first is because the black and the black tire would not have a contrast, is I painted the tires white and then I'm gonna be putting black like around the edge of them and a silver in the middle. Now, black covers everything. So when you start painting with your color, just remember that wherever you're gonna put black, you don't have to be perfectly neat. The black will cover everything. Now, as far as the windows go, um, try to stay away from them. You can do that with your edging if you want to, with your smaller brush, and you can start out with um, edging it with the smaller brush and then take the bigger brush, which is this one, and paint, okay? It's very important not to put a lot of paint in your brush because if you have too much paint in your brush, you get ridges, and especially with the round brush, but both of them really, and the ridges, if you don't smooth them out immediately to the right and to the left and you know all around, they will stay like that and it's almost impossible to get them out. So I would make sure that you don't put a lot of paint on the brush when you're edging. When you're using the bigger brush, you could put more because there's a bigger area to spread it in and just go back and forth and make sure it's smooth before you dip any more color. That's the important thing. When you're doing the windows, not a lot of paint on the brush, especially when you're doing this little piece in between here. So just very little paint on the brush goes a long way and smooth in all directions. But I'll walk you through that as we go along. So um, for those of you who have my instructions, I had asked you to have some kind of a palette or a tile or a piece of foil or a paper plate to put your paint out on. Um, for those of you who don't know me and are just seeing this video and know, don't know what's going on, you can go to your local ceramic studio and pick up something to paint. Uh, you also can go online and look this up. This is gare, G-A-R-E dot com. And you can find a local distributor to find out where you can get their products. They have great products. I use them a lot for all of these classes. So let's get started. I'm going to put uh, the black, because that's what I'm using, in my palette. And you put the color that you are using in your palette on your tile or whichever. And I always start with the bottom. So I'm going to start underneath. Now, like I said, you can, when you dip in a palette, you only can get that much paint on the brush. And that's about all the paint you should have when you first start out with your first brush load. So I'm gonna start under here. And you see these ridges? I don't know if you could really see them that I'm talking about. Make sure that you really smooth them out. This paint goes a long, long way. Someone asked if they had enough paint. You have enough paint in the bottle. Um, to finish the project. So I'm doing black and I'm gonna paint almost everything. I'm gonna try to stay away from the windows, but if a little bit gets on there, it just might need a couple of coats of the silver, which it might need anyway. So don't worry too much. Let's get the brunt of the color on. Avoid the windows if possible. If the tires you're painting black, which I did on all of the trucks, um, you don't have to worry if your color gets on the tire because black covers everything, okay? It's just the windows and um, the grill I would just go over with the color that you're using because these colors were put on top of the blue, okay? So you don't really have to worry about that. Just get your base coat on. Now, depending on the color that you're using, some of the colors need two coats. Um, what I would do is I would get the one coat on and then go back and spot check. And you might not have to do a complete second coat, but you might have to go over certain areas. So again, a little bit of paint. See that one brush load did half the bottom of the truck. You don't have to paint inside, but make it look neat on the bottom. It's important that your piece be completed all around. And I had less paint in my brush this time. And I still did a big section, okay? And again, a little more paint. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing.
Now, I did a black, um, I mean, a white tire, and I did that ahead of time because I'm doing a black truck, which I said. Um, so I am going to put some black around it. So for now, until I use my smaller brush, I am putting black on the bottom of the tire. But you won't do that because you're, you're using a color unless you're doing black like I am, which I think only one person elected to do black. Hi, Ginny. Um, I want to thank Chris at the library for putting this all together for all of us during this crazy time that we're going through. It gives us something to do, something to look forward to. Okay, now, now during this video, I'm probably going to move faster than you're going to move because it's important that I get you out all the instructions. Uh, you can, like while I'm painting the truck and you're painting the truck, it's gonna take a lot longer. You could pause the video and then wind up to the next um, area that I'm in. I'll continue to paint the truck a little bit more, at least get one side done so that I can show you uh, anything, any problems that come up. In the, um, in the flatbed here, you um, can do the same color. I did the same color in all of them. If you wanted to mix a dot of black into your color to make it a little darker, to show depth, you can do that, but remember a dot at a time. And I would do that after you're finished with the whole truck, even the, the color on the inside, and then add a dot of the black and go over it with a little darker color. Like I said, that would show depth, okay? So I'm going to, you can see it's a little bit wet yet, so it's hard to turn over. I might have to hold it up in the air because I'm holding it in front of my face, and that's not good. Because don't you all want to see me? Um, okay. So now I'm going to move on to the side. And like I said, when it comes to the grill, well, I'll move on to the front here. Just go right over it. It's a lot, lot easier than trying to go in between. But I, I might do it like that, and I might leave, leave part of the grill without the color on it. Okay, just like that. But if it gets on it, like I said, I have it on there, the silver will cover it. When you're finished painting the truck, it's always a good idea to turn it upside down because then you see all the little white spots that you missed and that's important to get all of those covered. The same thing with the window. I mean, you can trim with the smaller brush, but you can also, it's, it's probably a lot easier to do it with this brush. What you do is you just lay your brush flat and just work it right across the edge if you have enough paint in your brush, okay? But like I said, if it gets on the window, we'll go over it, so no big deal. And then most times when you paint, and I may avoid the window now, but I may do the silver and say, oh, I forgot a spot of black, and you can go back, you can go back and forth. I mean, I have to do that, and I'm sure you all would be doing that also, okay? Now I'm moving on to the side, and I'm just going to do this side of the truck. And then I can demonstrate anything else that needs to be done on this side of the truck, so I don't have to completely finish the truck. And like I said, you can pause the video at any time when I move on and finish your truck and then go back. And you can go back the next day. You have the instructions. You, will also, you also have my email address on those instructions. So anybody who wants to get in touch with me, just feel free anytime. So... Um, and someone asked me, will the little bit of red or the color that they have do the whole truck? I didn't even fill that well, and I did the whole bottom and almost the whole front of the truck. So you really don't need a lot of paint. You have more than enough in there. So I'm going to need a little bit more out, though. And continue on. So these classes that are now online, I've been doing Zoom classes and um, YouTube and to-go kits, and it's, it's, it's a new way of doing business and a new way of life for all of us. So we're all trying to adjust. Look how nice that edged. I went ahead and did silver ahead of time because I want to show you something and it needs to be dry later. But I'm using just this very large brush and I use the pointed edge, flatten and come across. And it does a pretty nice edge on it. I mean, you can't do that little piece in the middle, that you have to use a smaller brush. 
nothing up bad around the edges, right? And that's with the big brush. And all you do is you flatten the brush and you use that edge, as you can see here, of the brush to make that line. Okay? But of course, I don't want that there. Now, this is something else I wanted to tell you, and it doesn't really matter. Um, you can put your, your base coat on there. It doesn't really matter. But the um, bumpers, bumpers, no, running boards. The running boards, I did black on this truck, and I did silver on this truck and silver on the red truck. So if you get your color on it, the black will go over it, the silver will go over it. So don't even think about that right now, okay? And I'm gonna continue to paint. Try to get at least this one side done. I um, gave you all complimentary brushes this time, but in the future, since most of you take the classes, take my classes over and over again, I won't be giving out brushes, so I want you to really know how to take care of your brushes. And I've, I've stressed it when we're at classes, but now that they're yours, I think you should really take effort and, you know, a lot of effort in making sure that you clean them properly. Don't ever bang your brush, here's my little water bowl, don't ever bang your brushes in the bottom of the bowl. Uh, with this brush, I would go back and forth. You take your fingers and you clean it and you swish it and you clean it. And then I lay it up here until I can go wash it with soap and water. The round brushes, the round brushes, I do the same thing. I swish, I roll it on the side of the bowl and just lay it here until you can go wash it better. Now, in between um, these colors, you probably should go wash it with soap and water. And you can do that because you can pause the video. So... Um, let me continue on this. I have, I have both sides going anyway. I forgot this tire here, so I have to get this tire. And you have a set of instructions. So if I forget to say something, I, I hopefully I covered them all in the written instructions. When you do the yellow on your headlights, now this one on the green, I just left them silver. But on the red, I made them yellow, as you can see here. Probably going to take a lot of coats. Okay, so put the silver over the whole thing to cover your base coat. I would put the silver over the circle part and then put the silver over where the yellow is going to go because I think the yellow will cover better over the silver than it will over uh, your base color because your base color is darker. Yellow is one of the hardest colors to cover. So I almost have this side completed, but I'm going to get my little brush and do some edging here. Of course, I got it all over my tire, which I'm going to have to go back and touch up. I have a tendency to work faster and go back and touch up than to work really slow and meticulous. But this is your piece, and you work however you are comfortable. But I always go back and check to make sure all my brush strokes are smooth. I don't want to see ridges in my paint. I don't want it to dry with those ridges. All right, so I'm, I'm going to stop here. I'm going to put my brush in the water. it out really well. Now I'm not banging it straight down. I'm going back and forth on the bottom just to get the paint out of it. And I had said to have some paper towels handy. I got paint all over my arm already. And this way you can wipe it out on a paper towel. Okay. So now I'm going to take my little brush and try to edge around my tires and around my windows. Now you have a little smaller brush than I have here. But this piece here just lay your brush down. Always lean your hand when you paint. Either lean your palm of your hand or your pinky. Some people work like this. I can't work like that, so. And 
just that piece in the middle. Okay? And if you make a mistake, you just go back with the silver and you keep touching up. Okay, so I'm going to see if I can finish where the tires are. And you won't have to do this unless you're doing black and you want light tires. I'm probably the only one that's going to be doing this. And uh, if, you're, if you're doing a black truck, I wanted to say this, if you're doing a black truck and your black tire, you can make this whole fender in silver. Um, I don't know about the front one, but you know what you can do also? You can go on Pinterest and you can just type in pictures of pickup trucks or you can just go into Google and type in pictures of pickup trucks and you'll see a lot of different versions. Also, there are people who put emblems and do designs on it. Feel free, you are the artist and you can decorate this however, however, a lot of people, their husbands or someone they know has a pickup truck and they wanna do it similar to that, feel free. Uh, I have found that the marker that I asked you to get, this works great for doing lines and for doing um, the crack in the window, but it must be very, very, very dry. So I wouldn't suggest you use this until tomorrow uh, or the next, you know, until the next day after your truck is really dry. That's why I went ahead and did the silver on this one window ahead of time because I wanted you uh, to see me actually do the crack in the window, okay? Um, on these trucks, I don't have cracks in the windows. I just put a couple of lines across, which you can do with the snow. Uh, I use that as your white paint and you can do a couple of lines across there. And um, yeah, and don't forget, let's, let's finish. I'm gonna finish this, then I'll go on to the silver and do some silver with you also. Like I said, while I'm finishing this, you can pause it. You could jump to the next set of instructions and you could finish and take your time with painting your truck. I think during all this time being home, my ceramics is what kept me sane. It gave me something to do every day. And now that I'm doing classes again, it's great. It's great, and it's great to have all of you back in my life. Okay. I think I'll move on to the silver, no matter how I did this, because this is something that's probably gonna take me time to edge with the black on the side of the tire. So what I'm doing here, I'm putting black on the side of the tire. See how hard it is to see? So it's a black tire with a white wall going around it. Okay, but I'm gonna stop at this point. And like I said, you can just pause the video and keep up with me with the next step and take your time. That's the advantage of doing this on YouTube video because you can pause it. I've done some Zoom classes and I have to keep up with them or I have to wait for everyone, which is good too because then I have an interaction with everybody. But um, you know, for this library, they don't have Zoom. And I haven't gotten into it myself yet to host a, uh, a class. But if this continues, I may have to look into that also. So for now, let's, um, you can pause, like I said, and now jump back. And we're going to do silver. So again, you should have washed your brushes out really well, dried them on your paper towel. Okay. And we'll do the silver. So when you do the silver, it's the same thing. Don't pick up a lot, a lot of paint in your brush because there's nowhere to go with it and you don't want to have to go onto the black with it. So just start in the middle and smooth out those brush strokes. A little bit of paint is better than too much paint. You can always go back and get more, but it's harder to get it off. I mean, I'm lucky with the black because if I make a mess, the black covers everything. But if you're doing your colors, it's better to try to be a little neat. And I see how I always go back and just keep smoothing. Spread it out as far as it'll go, even when you think there's no more paint in the brush, there is. Okay. Um, these markers also come in a lot of different colors. So on the black truck, you could get yourself a silver marker and you could do the lines uh, that I've done here. You could do the lines in silver. You could do them in silver on any of the colored trucks. I did these by hand and that was not easy. I'm gonna show you a, uh, something that I just came up with that makes it easier for you to paint. But let me get this window done. So 
I find that when I do the windows or I do any edging, I do it one way and then I turn the truck around and do the bottom part a different way. Because I find I get a better line that way. But you know, you all have to work the way you think is the best for you. Again, just I just put very, very, very little paint in the brush. Put the brush down away from the edge because in case you have too much paint, you want it to bleed, you don't want it to bleed over the edge. And then just flatten your brush and run it across, and it gives you a nice line. A little bit of paint. And I keep going back and smoothing because I know that those ridges stay for a long time almost impossible to get out unless you want to sand the piece down and that's a pain in the neck. So, okay, so I got that done, I think. And let's see here. See, like here, I'm probably gonna go back and touch up with a little bit of black. With all those touch-ups, you'll have plenty of time to do them. And that's my brush again. I didn't do all of the silver, I just did that. You're gonna do your silver hubcaps, okay? There's a silver door handle and the silver in the windows, front and back. So the back, and then you're gonna do the silver bumper. Maybe I I'll do that, I'll do the front bumper with you so you can get an idea of what to do. And you see these lines that I put in here? You could do that with the marker. This marker is wonderful, but it must be dry. Just remember that the piece must be dry before you put that in there. Uh, when I did it, when it was wet the other day, it was just picking up clumps of paint in the marker, so you might have to wipe the tip with a paper towel. But then when I did uh, these lines, the piece was so completely dry, and this went on beautifully. This line I did freehand. You can see it's a little rickety, and these I did with the marker. So a little better. I have to touch up a little bit there. But you can. You have the color, and you can just go back and forth, and you can do that. So um, first I'm going to touch up my window with the black to make it a little neater. said you can go back anytime and touch these up you have the colors now you have the brushes so you can paint at your leisure so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and paint the bumper in the front and the grill and the lights and I'm getting pretty good coverage with the silver even over the black Yeah, see that? Even over the black. See right there? It covered pretty well. So if I need touch-up, I'll do some more touch-up later on. But for now, I just want to get the one coat on. Yeah, I could see the black coming through a little bit, so I, I, I will need a second coat on there. grill and the lights. Okay, so when you do the lights, just start away from the edge because you always have too much paint when you st start and then just very gently run that edge of the brush around the light. And like I said, you can always go back and touch up when there's mistakes. And go right over the headlight. I think the yellow will cover better over the silver than over your base color. There's also little bumps here. I guess they're other kind of lights. And I did them in silver also. See that right there?
one of the libraries even asked me to do a, um, a class outside and cut the amount of people in half and do it with social distancing. So that should be interesting too. Uh, I'm gonna do a second coat over where I see that the black didn't cover and the second coat covered very well. As long as the color is dry, you can, you know, you can, it loses its wet sheen and go right back over it. Okay, I mean, it may not be the neatest, but at least it gives you the idea of how that's gonna be. Now, what I would do with this is after this is dry the next day, I had asked you to get this extra fine point Sharpie, it's actually called ultra fine point Sharpie, and draw the lines in there. And it's very easy to do, and it really, really works. And if, you, on the, if you're doing the black truck, you can get a silver marker also. So we got that on there. Okay, so I'm going to wash my brush out. Now, you all, of course, can pause the video at this point because it's going to take time to do all the silver. So don't forget the silver is on four windows, the back, the sides, the front, and on the side windows you have this extra little, oops, I'm not too far up in the air, How do you, I have this extra little piece here to do, and then on the grill, and the headlights, and the bumper, and the, hub, the hubcaps on all of the wheels, and don't forget the back bumper and the lights in the back. Now, I didn't put the yellow on the lights in the back, but you can, you know, I, I do samples sometimes, I forget what I'm doing from one to the next, but anyway, that's pretty much the instructions for painting the truck. Now, what I wanna walk you through is doing the, uh, the crack in the window. And I painted this window ahead of time so it's nice and dry, so I'm hoping that this works. And all I did was paint a star. Okay, so I don't know if you could see this, but I painted a star on the window, make it kind of fat, and it doesn't have to be um, very big, very wide, it, it doesn't have to be even. And then you're gonna go back in with your black, you all have black, and you're gonna fill that in. Okay, I'm just doing this quickly on the paper so you can see it. I'm gonna fill that in, and then from each of the points, you do like a wiggle line. You know, a little bit off the point, so it shows that it's cracks in the window. Okay, so let's see if I can do this on here. See this, it's kind of hard. Oh yeah, see it's working fine. Okay, so that gives me the crack. I'm gonna cover the marker at this point and I'm gonna fill that in with my black. So I'm gonna take a little smaller brush. You have smaller brushes than I do there. And I'm gonna fill that in. And it's guide, so if you wanna make it wider, fatter, you can. What I'm doing, I'm trying to make this a little fatter as I go along. Uh, you know, you're, you're painting it, whatever looks good to you. And then I'll go back to the marker. Back to the marker and just draw some squiggly lines. Okay, so now the marker is not writing as well. And does that look like a crack in the window? Pretty good, huh? Now, if you want to draw them on with the, the brush and the paint, you can do that also, all right? And the other thing is if you don't want to, um, what a mess I am, huh? If you, don't, if you don't want to do the crack, you can just do some lines, and this is kind of wet on this one, so it's not really working as well right now. I'll do it with my brush so you can see. You can just draw some lines across the window. You could do them in the white, you could do them in the black. Kind of just shows like a glare on there, okay? All right, so now let's go to the yellow. Like I said, again, pause it, catch up to me. 
And like I said, don't do this until tomorrow or hours later when you know it's really dry. And have a paper towel handy to wipe off the tip in case it gets a lot of paint on the tip. So it does work, but it takes a little bit of patience. So I'm going to take a, I mean, you need hardly any yellow. Now, you don't have to put your colors, all your colors out on the palette because you're all working from these that I gave you. So just unscrew them and just work from the jar. Okay, the only one you should put on the palette is the bottle that I gave you with the base coat color of the truck. Um, I'm also going to ask you if you can to um, wash these out and next time you pick up, bring them back to the library. And it's a lot of plastic going into the environment. It also keeps down the cost of any future classes because I have to buy hundreds of these. So not important if you throw them away, it's no big deal, but if you wanna take the effort and rinse them out, I'll always take them back, so thank you. All right, so let's, let's try to do that. Um, a, a way of doing the, the, uh, the lights is in, to get a lot more paint on there and it might cover a little better is dip the handle of your brush in your paint. And I guess you can all see this. Put this down and kind of squiggle it around. Now, you don't have to do the whole inside of the light, but that covers a lot better than trying to paint with the point of the brush. All right. Go right in the middle and then circle it. Just try to make a circle with your brush. Okay, and you can make it bigger, you can make it smaller, but that works out perfectly. And it covers better too. But if you wanna go in with the brush and you wanna fill it all in, you can do that also. So let's just make sure that I got everything covered according to the instructions. Oh, the snow. Okay, you want, you want to see how I put snow on. I have this in front of my face. That's really smart. Um, and sealer. If you want sealer, you can go to Michael's. You can go to Amazon. They sell Krylon. They sell uh, a paint-on sealer. Uh, the paints are self-sealing. They're all non-toxic, so you don't have to worry about dying from them. And um, you can spray, but remember, outside, spray is, can be toxic inside. Spray outside. A very light motion back and forth, six to eight inches away from the piece, read the instructions on the can and on the labels of the bottles. People who don't wanna spray and have issues with breathing and stuff like that, you can get a paint on sealer. And I know Amazon, I think I put it on there. Amazon sells, um, yeah, Duncan Gloss Brush on Sealer, Amazon sells. Okay, so you can get that. And sometimes I seal before the snow, but it really doesn't make that much of a difference. I don't like the snow too, too shiny, but this snow that I gave you, which is in here, happens to have glitter in it. So I'm gonna use it right from the jar. And because I didn't wash my brush out well, I hope that I don't get black in it. So all you're doing with the snow is you're just taking a clump like so, and you're laying it down, okay? And then you're moving it. Snow falls randomly, so you don't have to worry about how you put it on, okay? That's all you do with the snow. You put a little snow on like so. You can put a little snow on the roof. You can put snow on the bumpers. Uh, you can put snow on the bed in the back. And let me show you this one. This will give you a better idea. And put your brush, wash your brush immediately after using the snow because the snow is very thick and it, it's hard to get out of the brush if you let it dry, okay? I did snow a little bit on the roof. I did it on the hood. Um, I did it on the running boards, a little on the tires. And I also did some on top of the flatbed. But like I said, this is yours. If you don't want snow, you don't have to do it. Okay, so there we go. So you see, I went back with a brush and I put the red in between with the, with the point of that brush. You could do that, you can go back and forth, play with the silver, play with the red, you can do that. Or if you wanted just to do it in black like this truck, oh, this one I have in blue, and this one I have in black, okay. This one I did with the marker and it worked out beautifully with the marker. Let me show you on this truck, because this truck, I'm gonna put this one aside and this one aside, and I'm gonna take the marker and see if the marker is working right now. I'll just clean off the tip. And see how easy it is to do the window. The window has a groove. So just follow that groove. So that's easy enough to do to follow the groove. OK. 
Okay. Oh yeah, I wanted to show you how to do those side ones too. If you want it thicker, just keep going over it and over it. But like I said, this one, I think that came out pretty good. Okay, and and your 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 point of your pen just stays right in the groove in the windows, both the little window and that window on the side there. Now for the, for this, um, let me make sure that this is clean so this works well. Okay, I have a ruler, but you can use, I used an emery board when I did the first line. So what you do is put your ruler down. I don't know if I can see what I'm doing this way. And put your marker right, hold it right on the edge of the ruler. And you go right across. It gives you a perfect line. I don't know if you could see that. See that line up top there? Now, when you have a curve, you're going to have to draw that in by hand. But on the side here, find where the line is, put your marker down. See that? Can you see that? It's light, but you can keep going over it. And it gives you, look at the line on the top here, it gives you a perfect line. All right, and that's a lot better to play with the pen like that than to have to do that with a brush. But if you're confident and you know how to do lines with a brush, go for it. Go for it. So. Um, I think that's all I really have to show you. Again, if you want to, you can take uh, a picture. I had them do that at one of the other classes. Let me see if I can get this lined up so that you can take a picture of the screen. No, it's not gonna work. It's you know a little bit too big. Let's see if I come back a little bit. You can take a picture of the screen. You might be able to take a picture of the screen and uh, this way you'll have a, a colored picture on your phone to look at. All right, But you can also just keep going back and forth and look at the video anytime that you want. I will keep the video up for a while and if any of you have not had the opportunity to see the video by the end of the month, just uh, email me and I will make sure that it stays up. Also, if you have any questions, please email me. And for those of you who don't know me, my email is roecer at gmail.com, roecer at gmail.com. Okay, and uh, we're starting to line up future classes if you people are game. And the next one we're going to do is this birdhouse. Okay, and these will be available from Chris at the library, at the Williston Park Library. I believe the week of the 7th of September, but check with her also. Um, I have different dates in my head for all these different libraries and I forget who I tell what to. So if you want a different color, you can request it. If not, this is a uh, navy blue, this is a taupe, and the flowers are yellow and green. You will get the perch, you will get the piece. It's already been you know, cleaned, fired in bisque, ready to paint. And we will do a, a, a YouTube video again this way you have the instructions. And I would appreciate hearing from everybody and let me know how I did, what I did wrong, what I did right, what else you would like to see, uh, what more you would like to know concerning the piece that you're painting. And I wanna thank you all for joining me during this crazy time in our lives. And I hope to keep you all busy with ceramics. So again, thank you. I appreciate your, your continued support. Thank you, bye.